Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 26 by 24 two car garage floor. Now on some days, I don't get the chance to get there before the day before a couple days before and get the grade shot the boards up and all that. So we have to get there early in the morning and get the garage ready before we pour the concrete floor. So that's kind of what we're doing here. I wanted to show you guys what that was all about. So we got to put up the form for the garage door. They got a big 16 foot garage door there. And there's two other pass doors there, one right in front of me there in front of the laser. And then one in the back of the garage there to the right in that corner, there's another three foot door. So the guys, they'll get the forms, they'll screw the forms together, whatever we need. I'll get the grades shot. So the laser, take my laser and get my heights of the concrete floor. So everybody knows the height we're going at. And then, you know, Darren and Luke know where to screw that form to to get it right at grade. And this garage slab is going to slope two inches from the, from the back of the garage towards the front. So I'm getting those grades shot on. And then the girls there, I got, we actually got a new employee working here today, Sydney. She's in the gray sweatshirt. That's my daughter, Tia, in the black sweatshirt. Tia worked for me last year. If, if, for you guys that watch my videos, you recognize her, but... But Sydney's brand new, so we're breaking in a brand new employee too. We're training a new employee, so I'm, we're gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of go over what I do with, with training new people. So we got, as you can see, we got the forms up. We, my grades are shot. We snap those chalk lines so we know what to go by, and we're using a, a 3,500 psi mix with three quarter stone to pour the concrete floor. It's got fiber mesh in it too. Now this floor has radiant heat in it. If you're wondering what those white, kind of like those white tubes are, that's for radiant heat. So they're gonna heat the floor by pumping hot water through those tubes. And those have those are attached to uh, a wire mesh underneath to keep them in place. And then there's two inches of styrofoam under that. So that helps hold the heat into the concrete floor. So we're using fiber mesh for reinforcement on this. Now my job was, I was hired by the the foundation people just you know to come in here my labor to pour and finish today I didn't design the floor you know an architect or an engineer designed it so we're just here to pour the concrete and then power trial it smooth and the mix design for the concrete that wasn't my choice either that's all part of the, the package with the general contractor so we get as you can see we get quite a bit of that concrete poured out there's nine yards here on this two car garage and before we start screening, and then I shoot my my wet pad in the middle using the laser. So the wet pad in the middle is an inch lower than the the grade in the back of the garage, and it's an inch higher than the form there where the garage door is. So that gives us our our two inch slope to make sure everything any water that gets on the floor is gonna gonna run out towards the garage door. You can see Dan and I we were just kick screening this floor to get it level. We don't generally use a vibra screed on floors that are sloped or floors that have drains in them. We don't we want to make sure the concrete doesn't vibrate and sag in any way at all, so we generally hand screed it because it's a little bit slower. And we, the concrete generally doesn't sag at all when we hand screed something. <clears throat> so we get the back half all screeded. Now you can see Darren and I are screeding down this front half. You can see the rhythm we use when we screed. I'm watching my outside edge. He's watching his. And we're just pulling the screed back in the same rhythm while we're walking backwards and kicking our feet to fill in our foot tracks. It's, a pretty, it's pretty fast doing it that way. I mean, a garage like this only takes us about 30 to 35 minutes to pour, really. It doesn't take very long. So once we get it all poured out, now what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take Sydney, the new employee, and kind of train her how to bull float and how to mag edges. So it's just a matter of taking a little time. You can see T is kind of showing her right now what the bull float does and, and how it operates. And then I'm going to go over there in a minute and just make sure she does it the way I like it. What do you guys do when you have new employees? Do you start training them right off quick or do you only let them do the laboring part? Like like rake in the concrete you know I like training them to do some of the easier things as fast as I possibly can the first day second day third day I mean it doesn't matter I mean bull floating 
is a is a really important part of the process but it's also what I feel one of the easier parts so the more people that know how to bull flow the better for me it's just it's one thing less than than I or Darren or Luke have to do and we can move on to the more skilled finishing things and, and finish that stuff up to make things whole, all faster so I'm going over with Sydney right now the angle the pitch and the slope I like the bull float at when you're pushing that thing out over the concrete and then what I like the pitch and the slope of the bull float at when we're pulling it back towards me you know I don't like too much of a pitch that's what I'm showing her right there but I just want it sloped enough so it glides over the surface without digging in and the same on the way back so as little pitch on the bow float as possible so it doesn't leave a big divot there when you stop and start again and then pulling it back and making sure you know you're working up enough pace to fill in all the rock holes and if you have to go over it a second time or even a third time in that same spot that's what you need to do to get it bow floated right so that's that's what I'm explaining to her right there you know it's it's a relatively easy thing to learn so why not teach you know, if you guys got new people, why not teach them right off the bat? It just gives them another responsibility, uh, makes them feel a little bit more important, a little bit more part of the crew, rather than them just standing there watching. So that's what Sydney's going to do now. She's going to try. This is her first time bull floating. She's going to get that side all bull floated. Tia's done it. You know, this is her Tia's second year, so she's done it last year. So she can kind of help her out keep an eye on her and Darren's over there explaining to him that once you get done bow floating when you pick it up it usually leaves a little mark there so we like to mag float that little mark right out to make sure there's no no marks there at all and the surface is nice and smooth so that T is magging out the bow float mark when you pick it up and Sydney's getting that all bow floated nice and smooth for us so Darren Luke and I can you know get whatever else done we need to get done you can see both phones really not too bad and explaining it to somebody that's willing to listen isn't really that hard to do either but both floating is important you need to do it right or you can kind of mess up the surface a little bit so that's all somebody needs to know if they're not a finisher they don't know how it could mess it up so you got to make sure you explain it to them in detail so T is taking over the bull float, and then what I'm going to do now is there's a little part back there that we didn't get bull floated, but we can reach by hand. So I'm explaining to Sydney, you know, how to mag float that, how a mag float operates, and what it does, and why we do it. So I'm showing her real quick how you mag float the surface that's not bull floated, and how you can work up the paste to get that surface nice and smooth with the mag float. There's, I mean, you can't really figure that out until you try it. So why not just, hey, here you are. Like we got time. Go ahead and try it while I'm right here. And, and then once they know, once you explain to them what it does and how to do it right, I mean, then it's next time you tell them to do it, you, you don't have to watch them, but you can go back and just check on it. So that's it, guys. That's how we pour a, a two-car garage floor and how I help start training a new employee. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.